So on the Bonanza bike with the totally stock Duramax 208, well, it's totally stock other than the VM22 carb and the header pipe. So this carb even has the stock jetting. So it has the 95 main jet and I think around a 15 pilot. So totally stock setup. And then of course it's running the stock timing with a stock flywheel. And then it's running a 12 tooth clutch and a 60 sprocket for a five to one ratio. So I'm gonna take the bike out for a zero to 30 and top speed the way it's set up right now with the stock timing and then the VM22 and the 95 main jet, which is gonna be entirely too small for this setup. At least I'll get a baseline on the bike and then I'll come back and I'll advance the timing and swap out the jetting for free. We'll see how this thing runs with this small main. I can tell it already doesn't like it. Zero to 30, Duramax 208 with a 95 main jet on the VM22. Got a baseline of 4.930 to 30. So now let me run this thing around the neighborhood here and we'll get a top speed real quick. Get a top speed with this 95 main jet. So we're pretty much topped out right there at 47.51 top speed. You can definitely tell it doesn't like that 95. All right, so we got a baseline of 4.930 to 30 and 47.51 top speed. It definitely doesn't like that 95 main jet. So now I'll go ahead and drill out that main jet and adjust the carb to make sure I got the right pilot in there. And then I'll take it back out and we'll do the same test and we'll see if it makes a difference. So I will drill out this main jet using my jet chart, probably drill it out to about a 120 or so. And then the pilot jet on these VM22s, usually I'll get away with a stock pilot, so I don't have to worry about the pilot up here at 3,700 foot elevation. But right now it's running about a turn and a half out on the fuel screw, which is about right for the pilot jet. So I know the pilot jet's in the ballpark, and just the main jet that's too small on this. So let me remove this bowl here. So I think I'll try a 120 on this setup and we'll see what happens. Pull this 95 main out of here. And I will drill this to about a 120. So after doing all these bikes around here with all these VM22 carbs and other carbs, I end up with all these stock main jets. So I figure instead of buying the main jets all the time, I might as well drill them out, which is easy enough. Go to my trusty drill bit chart here. And if you look on here, a 120 main is a 364 drill bit, or you can measure it by millimeters or inches. So got this drill bit here and there we go. 0.465 inches. So that's right at 119, 120. So I'll go ahead and drill this 95 out to 120. And I usually just hold it with vice grips lightly just to make sure it doesn't get away from me. There we go, instant 120. So 
So it fits nice and tight on here. Make sure there's none of the shavings left in here before I throw it back in the carb. So I figure I might as well use all these 95 main jets that I have lying around and re-drill them instead of spending money on main jets. So I got the 120 main jet in there and I adjusted the carb. The fuel screw is around one and a half turns out, which is right there. So I'll take the bike back out for zero to 30 and top speed. And I'll see if I can beat 4.93, zero to 30 and 47.51. And then I'll come back and advance the timing and we'll see if that makes any difference. Okay, let me go see if I can beat 4.97. What was it, 4.93? It feels like it runs a lot better. I think it was 4.93. Zero to 30. Duramax 208. BM22 with a 120 main jet. Oh, it's a lot better. It runs so much better. We did 4.20. So we knocked off more than a half a second, so it's definitely a lot quicker from zero to 30. So we'll see what we do for top speed now. It definitely feels a lot better. Beat it 49.83. So the bike was definitely a lot quicker and a lot faster with the 120 main. Okay, with the stock jetting and the BM22, we did 4.93 and 47.51. Then I drilled out the main jet, drilled out the 95 to a 120 main, and we dropped three quarters of a second, 4.20. So definitely a lot quicker and quite a bit faster. 49.83. So now I'll go ahead and pull the flywheel and advance the timing either by filing the stock flywheel key or not using a flywheel key at all. Pull this blower housing off of here. Now if I had an adjustable coil bracket like I did in the Predator 224 video, it'd be super easy to adjust timing. You just move the coil back and forth but seems how I don't, I guess I'll have to do the next best thing. There's nut back on here so I don't mess up the threads. Remove this flywheel key. So now I can reinstall the flywheel without the flywheel key and advance the flywheel forward a few degrees and tighten it back down because I don't actually need the flywheel key. Or I can take the stock flywheel key and grind a section off like on this eight degree key. If you measure this out, this eight degree key is about 1.9 millimeters. So I can grind the same off on this key and then reinstall it back into the crank and then use the key as a reference so the flywheel can't go forward anymore. Because like I said, I don't actually need the key, but I usually put one in here anyway, just to hold the flywheel to make sure it's not gonna move forward anymore as I'm tightening it. I just use it as a reference point. So I would throw this eight degree key in there, but this is free timing. So I'll just go ahead and file off this stock key and that'll give us about, what, 32 degrees advanced. 
you figure the stock flywheel is about 24 and then you're throwing eight in there so it'll put us about 32 about where a billet flywheel is so i'll mark this just to get me a reference point so when i use my file on here i don't file too much off i mean even if i do it really doesn't matter because i can back the flywheel off a little bit but i'll try to get it close to a couple millimeters okay there we go got my mark on there so now i'll just grind this part off right here either with a file or with my grinder part grinder and part file then i just got to make sure i get it deep enough the groove in here so the flywheel can slide over the groove so let me measure this out real quick and we'll see how close i am so right now i'm at 2.8 so i still got a ways to go to make that a little bit thinner to be at 1.9 millimeters that's eight degrees advance so let me file a little bit more on here there we go so here's our eight degree key got it pretty close about 1.89 or so and then 1.86 so pretty darn close to an eight degree key with a file and a couple minutes a grinder you can do this in about 30 seconds but like i said you don't even have to use a key if you don't want to but it makes a good reference point so you kind of know where to stop when you turn the flywheel forward so i'll pop this key on here So there's our homemade eight degree key, our free timing. I'm gonna put the wheel on there. I gotta make sure that I turn it forward where it hits that lip. If I tighten it back here, it's basically in the stock spot. So it's not advancing the timing. So I gotta make sure I tighten it forward. I think I'll torque this to about 54. Set this coil gap to about 30, just to make sure. Put this blower housing back on here. Okay, so we got about eight degrees timing on there for free. So now I'll go out and I'll see if I can beat 420, 030, and I think around 49.83 miles per hour. So Duramax 208, VM22 carb, 120 main, and about 8 degrees of added timing. All right, let's see what we did here. A 4.11. So close to a tenth quicker. I mean, it's pretty similar. I mean, it feels similar on the bike. Now let me do a top speed here real quick. the brakes locking up again I had that problem before with this drum brake on this bike if you back up the bike it feels like it's locking up oh yeah it is actually yeah right there you can feel it see what it does up here I'm gonna have to go home and work on that brake.
have to pull that brake apart and check out those pads. See if there's some material coming off and getting caught between the drum and the pad. So the bike seemed like it got a little bit quicker from zero to 30. I think it did a 4.11, but I'm gonna have to redo that top speed run. So with the 95 jetting and the VM22, we did 4.93 and 47.51. Then I added a 120 main. We dropped to 4.20. So it dropped quite a bit from zero to 30. And then 49.83 top speed. Then we advanced the timing and we dropped to 4.11. But then we had brake issues, so no top speed. Yeah, I had issues with this drum brake before. When you back up, you can see it or hear the pads in there. So I'm gonna pull that brake apart and probably get new pads for it. It'd be kind of cool to do a disc brake conversion on the Bonanza bike to get rid of that drum brake. But anyway, both mods seem to help. The jetting for sure, and then the timing, maybe, I'm not sure at top speed. Well, then I forgot to mention the Duramax 208 does have valve springs. I remember about a year and a half ago or so, I added valve springs in a different video. So that's why it's able to rev. 